Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome back to our little random building series. In today's episode, we're going to be building something incredibly simple, which I've just never seen before. We're going to be trying to build a deployable standalone turret. So the concept is, during a battle, we'll have an airship, or a larger tank, or something else, which will have the repair tentacles which will then create the turret and simply leave it behind the turret will have all the basic necessities to simply do combat and then we'll just leave it there slowly firing away at the enemies i want to make two variants and both of them i want to be as small as possible the first variant the much easier one will be made using missiles the second one, which I think will also be a little bit less effective, will be using a absolutely tiny advanced cannon. This will be firing very, very small, pure kinetic shells, hopefully at a decent enough speed that they can still hit the enemy. So this will be counter to fast flyers or counter to light units, similar to our, our little bike over there. Or at least, that's the idea. So, let's get the very basics sorted. So, we need a mainframe, of course. Click. We need cards and slots, of course, and then we don't need any sort of control. All we're going to want is aim point selection and target prio. Now, on the missile variant, we don't even need this. All we're going to need is the general purpose processing cards, just to make sure we can actually see the enemy. You may have noticed we didn't add those to the bike, because nothing the bike uses needs precise measurement, and generally, even without any type of detection, they still go toward the enemy. There is a very, very, very small amount of auto detection, and if there isn't, we can always just add a single radar, which is fine. So that's for the future. With the advanced cannon, we are really, really going to need a good detection system, and that's the problem with it. It just increases the size dramatically of the overall turret. So to start off with then, we're just going to build the more basic version. Once again, I want this to be as small and as cheap as possible. So expect this to be a one-shot kill kind of thing, which can be spammed in the hundreds. Seems a bit odd adding ammo storage next to the AI, but I am also going to add a little bit of armor between them. Not that that will make much difference at all right now. And I guess it's probably best if the AI is at the bottom. However, if we just put the AI there and the local weapon controller here, that means we can put the turret on this. And we've already got the basic turret done, surprisingly. Because the weapon will be there, it's already getting ammo, it's got mainframe connection, and it's got local weapon controller connection. It's going to be able to aim and fire as it chooses. So that's really all the basics, so it's just how you place them all. And then, I do want it to look a little bit better than this, at least a little bit better. Going still with the idea of this being a one-shot kill and me being fine with that... Let's use exhausts, because exhausts can look really good if you use them correctly. A great example was with the inbuilt bike in the previous video, as that was using one of the exhausts to essentially replace handlebars, and it was using this one but flipped, and it looked really, really good. So the idea is we're going to do this, and then on the bottom of all of these, we're going to have a block of rubber. Where is rubber? There it is. So when it gets dropped, it won't instantly kill itself. Now, what else we could do is add a small rotor blade going down. This will not require energy, surprisingly, because you can use rotor blades. Where are you? If I was a rotor blade, I would be under air. There we go. These don't necessarily need engine power. They're just far, far weaker if you don't use it. So we could have this on always up, and then it's already going in reverse, so it'll be trying to go down, and because this is below the center of mass, it will drag it down like this, and so if we drop it from the air, it should, in theory, not break. It should simply land. Let's do this. That looks really odd. We will make it a bit prettier than this. Even I am not happy with this. This is just a proof of concept kind of thing right now. Sure, that looks terrible. But with each piece of metal we add, we do increase the cost, and that is kind of against the point. So, either way, that's fine. So we need a control block, though, to actually control this. 
which we could just sneakily place somewhere in here, like so. There we are. Just for now, uh, spin blocks, rotation speed to maximum, constantly activate it. So I do need to reverse you then. There we go. So now that's always going down, and it goes down quite quickly, and it's nice and stable. It won't rotate or rock, because that's kind of dragging it down. Although, in that case, then really we don't want these. So we do want the blade at the very bottom, just so it kind of drags the craft in the direction we want. If we really wanted it to not flip, we would add a very small PID system, or just a couple of these with their own control blocks onto either side, and then that can be dropped and it would look far, far better and be far, far more agile. Just do this, because I want to. So, let's add the turret itself to the um, droppable turret. That makes sense, right? It makes sense to me anyway. So, missiles, we want the controller. Uh, we could make, actually, we could, sorry, we could make this a two-axis turret, so it can aim upwards against the enemy. Um, yeah, you know what, that wouldn't actually be terrible. Especially since I do want the missile to use the ejector add-ons. I'm also thinking that perhaps more than one ammo barrel might be necessary for this. Right now it's costing a whopping 270 resource. Wow, the controller is 100. I did not know that was so expensive. Relatively expensive, I should say. Hmm, I want this here, though. So I could do is just cheat the system a little bit. So if you don't know, if a block can't be placed the way you want it to, you can always do it like this. And that is still connected because it's connected like that to that block because that's how the game figures out if something should be dropped. It's a little bit on the cheesy side, but, well, it works, doesn't it? Uh, probably want very small missiles. What would be the smallest missile I could do, which, which is still longish range? Then you, of course, would be active radar. I mean, that's really badly done, though. No, that should be at the back. The fin should be at the back. I mean, that would be long range for its size, but it's also got no warhead. Yeah, that's probably more like what we're going to have. High explosive or frag? I think still frag. Uh, have it at like medium cone. That's fine. Because now frags have been nerfed if you put the cone at absolute minimum. I can't remember the exact number, but there is a sweet spot now. But I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, and I don't really mind right now. Because this whole video is just a proof of concept. I wasn't going to record, but then realized I really just want to record. <laughs> I don't know how wide that's gone. I wish you could just add these to the back, like that. That's what I would like. Hmm, how about this instead? So these two on the down, that one on the side. That's fine. So in theory, this should be working now. And it costs us 750. Really? You're almost as expensive as the bike. Oh look, an enemy duster has appeared. Well, the missiles bounce because of the tank, but... Yeah, I did something wrong there, didn't I? What did I do wrong? Ow. Oh, uh, I know what I did wrong. I didn't add a friend or foe. <laughs> you know, maybe that's important as well. Maybe that is also important. And also want a staggered fire. Okay, let's just despawn our other craft so we can test it out again properly. Missiles may be simple, but when it's 4am, like it is right now, sometimes the simple things can be a bit difficult. Yeah, the reload sp speed is absolutely atrocious due, due to the lack of ammo. Um, haven't we had two more like this? That should be a lot faster now. Active radar, short range thrusters, fins, a lot of fuel. Okay, that should be okay. Let's spawn in the enemy again. There we go, that's better. And we crash into the back and almost kill it. Okay, that is actually fine. I imagine the Duster will win this. It really should do, honestly. There we go. Hey, one last fire. 
So now I'll just try and make it a bit prettier and try to make it a bit less ineffective and then we will be right back. I think it looks kind of cute actually. I don't know what, again, similar to the bike, I like being able to see the functional components. I like the really bare minimum stuff when it comes to craft. It's just a style I really appreciate, even though it's not all that good. You know, though, armoring up the ammo barrels might be worth it, even for the extra cost, just because that way they won't be destroyed as fast. But the idea is, these would be dropped in large numbers. So out of nowhere, loads of these will simply crash into the ground and then start attacking. In my head, it looks glorious. Honestly, it does. That's a better fire rate. The damage isn't too bad, actually, per missile. Against a smaller craft, that probably would be not devastating, but not the worst. And now the fire rate is more reasonable. And it's adorable! Yeah. Still ridiculously slow at firing. Actually, that is very slow for the ammo, but I thought ammo barrels recharged faster than that. I would say that maybe an ammo processor might be worth it, because that's non-explosive. That will drain money constantly, but these won't survive very long. So, yeah, a lot of things to think about. I'll be right back once I've made some choices and hopefully made a better version of the standalone turret. This was a good test. Okay, let's see if we can drop this from the sky and it simply fall nice and safely. There it goes, firing away, and yep, absolutely fine, no damage taken. Just make sure I throw it away from a little bit higher. So if we ever do make a small aircraft carrier or something, we could easily drop these into the battlefield. Which does look really cool, got to be said. And another factor of these turrets, even though they are proving to be a little bit weaker than I imagined, because, well, missiles aren't as good as they used to be, I will say that they will be a great distraction unit. Any enemy which is fighting us will then see these as the new smallest vehicle, so if we use things like the bike, these will now be the distractor, since they have a mainframe and such, and will take up a little bit of the enemy's time. Also, it is kind of cool just to be able to pepper these everywhere on the battlefield very, very quickly. I will make a larger turret at some point, like a 2000 volume one. Okay, back to work making these a lot better. Ooh, how did you lose your... ...landing platform? The others didn't, though, did they? Full health, full health. How did the one which I didn't drop lose health? And how about now? A little bit more ammo, a little bit more armor around the core. It's now 856 resources. Okay, so at least two full volleys after being created. If it can do three, I think that will be enough. Just because their lifespan is going to be very short. Yep, three full volleys. With one shot apparently missing. Not quite a fourth. That's okay, actually. That's okay. So I think that is basically the finished design. Just need a little bit more armor around the turret itself. And I'm happy enough with that. For a tiny little distractor. So one thing as well, which I completely forgot about, is that the ammo processors actually do require engine power now, so we won't be able to use those. We've just got these very highly explosive things instead. Now for the advanced cannon version. That is really odd looking, and I imagine the recoil is going to throw this backwards very, very quickly. But at least it's kind of turret shaped. Sort of. In a way. If you squint. Just let that fully load, then we'll give it a quick test run. 
So we're no longer using the two axis turret, we're just using a single axis and then we're using the elevation mantlet. We're using purely kinetic shells with quite a bit of gunpowder, so it should in theory work. Although I feel like this one's going to need a slightly larger base and then that way we can have more ammo, we can have more protection because this will be the more expensive version. Turning off weapons only. And test one. Now this is prior to the detection system, so expect a bit of weirdness with the aiming. Yeah, that's not... Well, it did kill it. It did kill it, but it took a while. Um... You know what? Against the first faction and spamming it, maybe that would work. It's a 562 rounds per minute gun. It can fire for a grand total of one minute and a half before completely running out and then ne needing to reload. The reload phase takes about 40 seconds. For just about a thousand resources? Yeah, that'll do. Now, again, though, this is before the detection system. So for the detection system, that's going to increase the cost by at least 400. That's the minimum we're looking at. Which is why this probably isn't the best idea, really. I either scaling down the gun or making it actually slightly larger and more defended would be better. That's the main advantage to the missile variant. It doesn't really care about detection system. At most, it might need a radar. That's it. So, let's test out versus some of these smaller enemies like the enemy bikes. Actually, let's go ahead and verse something like the Sidewinder. Just pause time for a second. Now, is the Sidewinder the enemy I'm thinking of? Yes, it is. Quite a standard enemy for the first enemy faction. Are you using Belfed Lotus here as well? That's actually a really nice design for a turret. Now I'm kind of thinking about changing mine. Anyway, let's just continue. Well, it definitely chunks off wood easily enough. There's one internal explosion there, but one good shot against our ammo barrels and we're instantly out of the fight. Not enough damage per shot. Even at the decent fire rate, that is not strong enough. Out of curiosity, how expensive is the Sidewinder? 5,000, okay. So, for cost, it wasn't too bad, but of course, we can do better. Well, I've just done quite a few tests, and honestly, the obvious answer is to just make this a higher gauge cannon which fires slower. It's way more effective. But instead, we are about to test, once it's reloaded again, very, very fast firing, even smaller shells. I just want it to work. It's stupid, it's silly, but I want my miniguns that descend from space. Is that so wrong? How about something like this? Replacing the metal with wood means we can simply add more wood without increasing the cost, and it has a nice little seating area at the back as if it's being controlled. It also makes me think of one of the orky fortifications in the Dawn of War games, which does make me very happy indeed. We could add some more extra piping and stuff to make it look a little bit more rustic, and I think that's going to be okay. And the funny thing is, this thing still drops and takes very minimal damage when landing, and honestly what we could do is just raise this up by one, then add a layer of rubber blocks underneath so that it doesn't ever land on the wooden armour. That would be absolutely fine, and I don't think it would change the aesthetic too much. But yeah, I quite like that. It still only costs 1,100 resources, so it's still stupidly cheap. It's just a cannon on a stand, essentially, so what do you expect? But it's a droppable cannon on a stand, thanks to those lovely, lovely rotors. Which I swear are rotating in opposite ways. I tested this out a second ago, and it was working, so let's just... Yeah, they're both working. That's all I need to know. This will make test number 15. So, when they fall, they don't exactly fall gracefully, but they do indeed always land correctly. They never crash or take damage unless they're shot first. Even when they bounce off the barrel, it doesn't cause any damage, and that's the most extreme they're ever going to land. The one thing I will say is, though, thankfully, because of the recoil being so low on the gun, it's actually zero. 
even if it's firing, it's not going to suddenly do loop-to-loops in the air. Once we add the detection system, I can do the center of mass a little bit better so that rocking won't be an issue, and these can indeed be dropped from the air. Amazingly, all of these still cost less than half of my tank. Okay, so back to testing it out versus the Sidewinder. I just got a bit distracted, you know, throwing turrets from the sky. Time for a round two. With a better detection system, the guns would be actually hitting the target a bit more as well. Yeah, the damage is just too low. Even now it's firing significantly faster. It's now 800 rounds per minute. The amount of damage each of those shells are doing is minimal, but they are also going at... Oh god, was I repairing the whole time? Well, let's do another test afterwards just to prove that the repairing wasn't a big deal. Anyway, the shells are going at 850 meters per second though, so they will be really, really good against fast, smaller targets. But that's about it. I could realistically, upping the gauge to 100mm, lowering the fire rate, and changing them for frag shells, or keeping them as pure kinetic shells, would be the best idea. But at the same time, imagine three or four of these going off at the same time, just peppering the target with shots. Let's do that. Let's verse this versus something much bigger. Multiple of these versus something bigger. Then after that, we're going to spawn in the cornflake and edit it so it will now drop these turrets into a battlefield and we will remove its other weapons for the test. After that, I am happy enough that the concept works and then I will make better versions of these for the future. Well, this is definitely a best case scenario. We have 8,000 resources worth of the mini turrets versus the king cobra, which is worth 14,000. But of course, we have all of the turrets nicely lined up. It's going to be a little bit weird. Now, all of these turrets were dropped from 200 meters, and only one of them managed to take any significant damage, so I am happy enough with that. The blades really, really do help. So, who will win? Honestly, I'm thinking the turrets just because sheer number. In terms of volume, actually, the King Cobra does win, surprisingly. Wait, did my little missile crafts just vanish? Um, what just happened? That was odd. All oh, the mini shots. Very rapidly destroyed the insides, though. Yeah, but what happened to the little guys? They're definitely not too small. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, so I just spawned in two of them. Let's pause time like before. King Cobra's in. They were all off. Then back on. Go. I have no idea what happened there. If anyone can explain how that just happened, feel free to tell me. So yeah, these little things will definitely work against the very wooden enemies. As soon as it starts hitting metal though, there's a serious problem. But they're fun, and we can make better ones in the future. Okay, so now the last thing to do is to convert one of my crafts so that it can spawn in these turrets versus an enemy, just to make sure that works, and then I will go off and probably make better turrets in the future. A random thought, but the cornflake can actually be used in the Ashes of the Empire. It is actually small enough. And people were asking me, am I doing this because I want to do another playthrough of Ashes of the Empire? And honestly... Not particularly. Right now, I'm just doing this because Ashes of the Empire has a particular style, which is quite small, quite compact, and a bit Mad Maxi, which I really, really adore. So I'm just building in that style, and I thought I may as well try and build things for Ashes of the Empire in case I ever do go back. So now, just remove the turret, add the blueprint spawner, and we will be good to go. And of course, a control block, so we keep on spawning them. Well, that was a bit of friendly fire, but either way, testing out the finished product and the weapons hold fire, which I was hoping they would. They're dropped down a little bit rickety. They fire on the way down. And... 
they will indeed land. I've definitely set it too slow, though, on the spawning. They're spawning every, like, 20 seconds. Clearly, they can be made far faster. There we go, the next set. So that would, of course, be increased dramatically. Now I know the speed is a little bit faster. They're made very quickly. Only a few seconds. Maybe 10 seconds? Whee! Now, one thing I did find out, which is incredibly annoying, is that with advanced cannons, they don't necessarily spawn in with their ammo already reloaded. So, I will have to use regular autoloaders, not belt-fed, which actually isn't as big a problem as I first thought. Because, thankfully, the regular autoloaders are very good with very, very small ammo. So, it only decreased the fire rate by about 100. So, it went from 800 down to 700. That's still absolutely fine. Making a very, um, very clean pattern around the target. It's going to be a perfect square of, um, creations. There we go, two more. So, yeah, that's the idea. I don't think this would ever be used as a main weapon, but definitely as a good little distraction and just as something different and a bit fun. I will definitely have to make better turrets, though, for the future, but with that, I'm afraid I really am all out of time for today's video. The light is now coming through the window. It's basically the next day. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then, of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel and most importantly shows that from the depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future i'm having a lot of fun with these random little test builds thank you again and goodbye next time it will be the campaign episode